Ants of the Fire, The Legend of Tilo, an original novel by Jack Lee. Parts 11 and 12, Alone and The Trail. Part 11, Alone. The nurse grimaced in pain as she spoke. The larvae inside her head were gnawing her insides and sucking out her body's fluids. Her shell began to dry out and become brittle as she spoke. She screamed in pain and in spurts. Is there anything I can do? Tilo said. No, I can feel them eating me. Tilo wondered what her nurse would do in this situation. If the roles were reversed and the nurse had to watch Tilo being eaten from the inside out. The nurse was always so practical, showing no emotion about what needed to be done. Do you want me to end your pain? Tilo held her breath. She didn't know what she would do if the nurse said to go ahead and end her suffering, end her pain in her life. It will be soon enough, child. Tilo was relieved. She had been so ready to cause the nurse harm earlier, but now, the thought of having to gather the courage and nerves necessary to end her sister's life made her ill. She thought over everything the nurse had said. She thought about the mother she had never known and her sisters that were made to work for male overlords with monstrous slave drivers. She closed her eyes and tried to imagine what a roach might look like. She wondered if they were bigger than the cricket she had killed earlier. She realized finally what her nurse had been training her to do. How did we get out here? After we arrived in the roach's dwelling, the queen managed to lay six new eggs. There were five other nurses that kept close to her side along with myself. The queen tried to give them her royal touch, but I don't know if the other ones were successful. She gave us each an egg. The hope was that four of the six eggs hatched would produce a new queen. The other two were to be new drones for the queen to mate with. We needed a new queen a new queen that could produce a colony strong enough to save the others. I was one of the six. I ran as fast as I could. To the sun and the soil. I was supposed to be a queen? Yes. I found our hole in the ground and hatched you myself. I knew from the beginning that you were not a drone, and I became very excited. You were going to be the queen that would raise a colony to save our mother. I tried to gather enough food for you, tried to feed you enough to make you a queen, but I failed. I failed our queen. I didn't produce a new queen to save her. I am not what I'm supposed to be? No, child, you are not. I went through so much to keep you alive hunting and gathering to feed you, all the while watching and hoping for you to turn into this beautiful queen that would save us all. You are nothing like I wanted you to be. That I needed you to be. Tilo absorbed the blow of her nurse's words as she spoke. The nurse was the only mother, family, and friend that she had ever known. Any sense of companionship that she had ever felt with nurse began to melt away. Ants need community. Tilo had just lost hers. Do you feel anything for me at all? You are different from me in every way. I do not even know how to feel for you. Any feelings I had for you faded when I realized that you were not what I wanted you to be. It is the harsh truth of our reality, dear. The nurse saw the hurt on Tilo's face and felt the grinding and gnawing inside her own body. In her pain, she had lost her wits and worried that what she had said would keep Tilo from trying to find the colony and save the queen somehow. The truth hurt Tilo, but if the truth kept her from trying to save the queen, then 
the truth would also kill them all. Even though I am grieved by what you are not, I have done my best to be hopeful about what you are. Maybe it takes an abomination to stop an abomination. What do you mean abomination? Like the male soldiers? How am I an abomination? The nurse's mind began to shift in multiple directions as the larvae fed on her body. She had meant to be encouraging, but maybe she was not meant to be encouraging. Maybe it just wasn't her place. You're not a queen, but you're a strong warrior. You can... Nurse's words were cut off by a loud scream. Ah! She thought the sun was fading away and realized that it was her own eyes. She could feel her eyes growing dark. Dilo, save our mother the queen. See if you can track my scent back to the nest where they are keeping her free. Our sisters lead them back here. Start again. The nurse stops talking. There were no more movements in her body. Her outer shell was dry and brittle. The head crumbled off of her fragile body and lay to her side. Tilo sensed the larvae inside the nurse's chest. She thought about the nurse's life, her purpose. The nurse believed in the survival of the colony at all costs. Nothing was more important. Tilo realized she was hungry. She snapped through the nurse's shell to reveal the three larvae twisting and writhing in the dead body. Tilo ate. Part 12. The Trail With her belly full and her heart weighed down by her task, Tilo started out on her journey from where the nurse's body lay. She traced her steps back to the hole in the ground that her and the nurse had called home, and for the first time in her life, Tilo slept alone. When she woke, she felt around the outside of her home and tried to decipher the direction of the enslaved ant colony. She lurked through each blade of grass trying to find the nurse's scent. Her scent was everywhere. She found many traces of their shared history. The nurse's scent was the strongest when it was mixed with Tilo's. Every clump of soil and leaf of clover smelled of their small family. It was the scent of memory. Tilo's memory. As she circled out around their home, she finally caught a trace of the nurse's trail. It was easy to recognize because it smelled of only the nurse. It had the smell of loneliness and isolation. It was the scent of history. She looked for any evidence of the nurse's time as a fugitive carrying her egg, scouring the soil for a place that provided some semblance of safety and security. Tila wondered about the other five nurses and the other five eggs. Where had they gone? Why was her nurse alone? If three eggs were drones, doesn't that mean that they were supposed to stay together and help each other? An ant cannot hope to start a colony with just a drone. She traveled across the terrain, stopping to rest or hunt whenever she became tired or hungry. She traveled until the nurse's scent became muddled with scents unfamiliar. Tilo's senses created images in her mind of at least six other ants. This is where the group of six nurses had dispersed into the wilderness to hatch their precious eggs and raise a savior. The scents branched off in different trails in various directions. She had followed the nurse's trail but detected three more. One trail contained the scents of three other ants. The other trails contained the scent of only one. Tilo's mind raced with the possibility of finding her sisters. Maybe the other nurses had been successful in producing queens. Maybe she had family. Maybe she didn't have to be alone. She decided to try her luck with the trail that contained the scent of three other nurse ants. Tilo had made her way up the trail when the scent of the three ants became harder to follow. Up until this point, the scents had been distinct and easy to follow, like following a pattern of synchronized fireflies. The scents leaped off the ground like a trail of colors that decorated the soil and grass. But where there had been only 
the color of the three scents to follow that were now many. The three nurses' trail was still there, but it had been diluted by other scents and colors that made it more difficult for Tilo to perceive and follow. Tilo smelled something else. It was a scent that was not of an ant's making. It smelled like the dead flesh of an easy meal. Tilo quickly realized she was hungry. She followed the scent and noticed the grass was matted to the ground in some places as she walked. Leaves broken and bent at the base, as if something had dragged itself across the ground. When Tilo saw the source of the scent, she became very excited. A frog had died and left its carcass out in the open for a hungry ant like herself to enjoy. She approached the dead frog, looking forward to an easy meal. She was stopped by drops of venom, landing at her feet and sizzling the ground, giving off steam that only an ant could be able to see. Stop right there, a voice called from behind the frog. Who's there? Tilo said. We don't want any trouble. You're big, but you can't take on all of us. All of whom? Tilo recognized the language. It was ant language. But the nurse's story of how the leader of the roaches spoke the ant language had made her leery of trusting familiar tongues in strange voices. If roaches spoke ant, who knows what other creatures did also. A few ant heads began to appear around the body of the frog, a dozen or so. Some were crawling over the top of the frog and some were peeking around the frog's head and backside. One ant pushed out the frog's eyeball and emerged from its skull. All of us. Ants. They were the exact same color, size, and shape of Tilo's nurse. If Tilo had not known better, she would have thought they were her nurse replicated many times over. The ants whispered and appeared to be having an intense discussion about Tilo's presence. They had the look of fear on their faces. Their leader was the only one of them that addressed Tilo. We don't know what colony you are from, but you aren't from ours. We don't want any trouble. I don't have a colony. How could you not have a colony? You're obviously an older ant. You can't survive without a colony. The madness alone would kill you. It was just me and my nurse. She, uh, passed away. I'm trying to follow her trail to find my colony, or what I hope is my colony. I haven't met them yet. Tilo heard the discussion among the ants continue. They were having a fierce argument about whether or not to ask her something. Should, Should we ask, ask her the question? question? No, no, she, she doesn't, doesn't have a colony. What if she, she lies? She, she wouldn't know, know the answer. Why, why ask the questions? questions? We, can we can take her. her. We, we can, can totally, totally take her. her. What if she can? Look how big she is. Tilo trembled. She felt the overwhelming desire to fight. Hearing one of the ants speak of taking her unleashed a primal deep desire inside of her. Even though she had fought a recent battle with the cricket, it felt like a long time ago. But she was still a bit unsure of herself, and if these ants decided to attack, all hope for Tilo's colony might be lost. Just, Just ask, ask her! You can't hurt, hurt to be, to be sure. sure. She may be the... Shh! We don't want other colonies to know about that. What if she's a scout from the other tribe? What is the name? What is the name? The name? Tilo said. Yes. If you are looking for your colony, you have to know the name. All ants know the name. Tilo looked at the ground as if the answer to the question was drawn in the soil. Tilo only knew two names, her own and her nurse. But what if that didn't mean anything to them? She thought that maybe they knew her nurse. Nurse. The name, the name is Nurse. That's a title and designation, not a name. Um, then Tilo. That's the only other name I know. She got it wrong, let's get her. No, she didn't get it wrong. It's not a name. It could have been for some of us. The ants rushed toward Tilo, squealing and shouting. Was that a battle yell? Tilo lowered herself to the ground and got ready to strike. 
No, 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 don't be scared. Tilo is a name. I apologize for my nieces. They have never heard the name, but I have. Who are you? Tilo asked. I am one of the six, like you. Where is your egg? Surely it would have hatched by now. I'm... I'm not one of the six. Then why are you so big? You have to be one of the six, just like me. I don't understand the question. Oh no. She's been alone too long. She's starting to go mad. I'm not mad. Nonsense. Ants belong in a colony. When they are isolated for too long, they go mad. We have to get you back to our home as soon as possible. Don't worry about your egg. I'm sure whatever happened to it is causing you guilt that is contributing to your madness. We don't need the egg anymore anyway. I'm not going anywhere. How do you know my name? Your name? The ant looked at Tilo in urgency and horror. She knew that something needed to be done. We have started again. Believe me, you belong with us. You are not alone. We'll help you. Tilo looked at the ant. She looked exactly like her nurse. This ant was a lot kinder than her nurse, though, and clearly younger. Maybe these ants knew something about the queen. Maybe they had managed to hatch a queen and already had an army ready to go fight the roaches and free her sisters. Tilo got excited at the idea of being part of an army. An army that goes to war together, fights together, and dies together. Come on with us. You'll be fine. Don't be scared. We have to get you assimilated as soon as we can so your madness does not become permanent. Grab some of the dead creatures' flesh to carry back to the colony. The rest of the gatherers will be along to haul the rest. Tilo and the rest of the ants grabbed pieces of the dead frog's body and began to carry it back to the colony. The ants operated as if they had one mind, grabbing their loads and walking in a straight line, as if they had memorized the operation through hours and hours of rehearsal. Their movements were fluid and deliberate. There was no wasted energy. Tilo followed along behind and tried to act like she knew what she was doing. She wondered what it would be like the first time she saw a true ant colony. Would they live in a hole in the ground like her and her nurse did? Would they all sleep in a big pile pressing their legs into each other's shells? Would she fit into the army? Would they understand Tilo's growing desire to fight and kill? Would they understand her hunger for battle? We'll take you to the queen first. You need to meet her. You've forgotten us, which means you're about to go mad. How do you know I'm going mad? You're just, you know, not making any sense. But don't you worry. We'll get you settled. Thank you for listening to parts 11 and 12 of Jack Lee's novella, Ants of the Fire, The Legend of Tilo, titled Alone and the Trail. For those that have yet to hear his bio, Jack Lee is from the American South. He enjoys clean water, fresh air, and tall trees. He writes when time and sanity allow. All noises and musical tracks in the background of this story are from freesound.org. The sounds and musical tracks are being used under CC0 1.0 Universal Public Domain Dedication Licenses. Please stick around for our final first time offering this week, my reading of Thanks via When Giving is All We Have by Alberto Rios.